All right, so the first AI business automation starts with this trigger. We are firstly using a type form, which is collecting our leads. So in this case, it's a simple form where we collect all the data about our prospect. In the event, we are using a new entry. So whenever someone fills out the form, we're going to trigger and fire this workflow. In our trigger, we chose the name of our form that we created. So as you can see, this form is called lead collection form. Just so you have an idea about how the form looks like, and maybe you can create a very similar one. So here I'm trying to make a standard contact us form. So firstly, we have the full name, then we have the email, phone number, country, company name, company size as well as what industry they belong to and then only at the end they can leave the message and ask our sales team for example about the products and services so in this case this is where they type their message in the first action after the trigger we are using formatter by zapier if you noticed we have a full name in our form but in hubspot which is our crm system where we are going to send all the data to we have to separate them into the first name and last name so in this case you can do that with formatter by zapier you firstly choose the text as the event inside the action specifically in input you put the variable that you want to split up so in this case it's this question what's your full name then in the separator we are using nothing because that is then going to tell Zapier that we want to use space as default and then in the last part in segment index we're using this option called all as a separate fields so we don't want to just keep first name or just last name we want to keep both of them because then later on we have to send both of them as separate fields into our CRM system as the second action after the trigger, we are sending a prompt to ChatGPT. So in this case, if you want to send the prompt to ChatGPT, you choose the conversation. And then in the action, you set up all the fields that you need. And so in this case, we are trying to use ChatGPT to summarize the message that the lead or prospect has left on the form. So that is going to make it super simple for our sales team, for example, because then they would have a very nice idea what this prospect is asking about. So in this case, when you are writing your prompt, you firstly want to set up context, then I'm writing down the message to summarize so in this case you put the variable from the type form if i hover over it you can see it says hi i'm interested in your service i would like to know more about pop-ups land and also the pricing options you offer thank you thomas so in this case i created a very short message but sometimes the messages and all the other inquiries that the prospects have can get long so in this case this is going to be another field in our crm system that is going to tell immediately sales team what this prospect is asking about and then as you can see i'm writing down the main prompt. So in this case, ChatGPT will summarize it in a very concise, straight to the point and short description what this prospect is asking about. If you want to know how you can write prompts inside Zapier when you are using the ChatGPT blog, go and check out the first link in the description down below where I put all my resources. I'm then setting up all the necessary fields. In this case, memory key is the most important. You want to set it up so that ChatGPT is going to remember all the previous conversations. So the format and output looks consistent. Now remember, when you get an output that you don't like, you always have to change the memory key because ChatGPT is going to remember the previous outputs and those previous outputs are going to affect the next ones. You can set up username, assistant name, assistant instructions, as well as max tokens, temperature and top P. And then the last action is actually going to put everything together and send it to our CRM system. We want to create a new contact. So that is going to be our event. We want to use all the data that we have collected throughout the form. Now remember, it can be any form. It doesn't need to be type form. You can use Google Forms or any other provider. And then inside our action, we are going to fill in all the fields. So in this case, we are starting out with the first name and last name. Now remember, we have used formatter to split those so you have to use that instead of the type form so in this case we split it up into two items and then we are using the data from the questions on our form to fill out all the necessary information in our crm system so this includes the prospect's email phone number then country the message that they left company name number of employees as well as the industry now keep in mind that we have to add the field for the chat gpt summary so in this case you can retrieve additional properties in hubspot when you create a new property which is super simple you just create a new column inside your table you can name it however you want to in this case i named it inquiry summary so this is going to include the chat gpt output and then also i created a new property called type form this is going to be yes or no or true or false and in this case we know that whenever someone fills out the form here it's always going to come from type form because this is a type form form so we always want to set it up to yes so after you add them here you just simply refresh fields and then you just go back and check out the fields and you 
you should find the ones that you have created in your HubSpot. So in this case, we have inquiry summary. We are going to put the reply variable over here that ChatGPT created for us. And then we also have the type form property that we created in HubSpot. So in this case, we are going to set it up to yes. This is going to give us a source that we can quickly identify in our CRM system. All right, and at the end of each automation in this video, I'm also going to show you how this works in real. So I'm going to test this step and we got a confirmation a contact was sent to HubSpot about five seconds ago. If I go to my HubSpot, you can see it's clean and nothing is here, but I'm going to refresh the page and yeah, it works. So here you can see we got the new lead over here. We fill out the type form before, so we would have some data that we can work with. And in this case, we got all the necessary data from our type form that is included right now in our CRM system. Now check out the two additional properties that we created. The first one is the type form. You can see that we immediately right now know that this one is coming from type form and it's set up to yes every single time someone fills out the form. So that's correct. And then we also have this one called inquiry summary that we created. And if I hover over it or if I click on it, you can see we got the chat GPT summary over here. Thomas is interested in pop ups land and wants more information about the service and its pricing options. So right now we know that this works and sales team can have a quick idea about what this prospect is asking about. All right. So the second AI business automation is going to include WordPress. In this case, we are going to start this trigger with scheduled by Zapier, which is a built in app inside Zapier. So you can set it up however you want to. But in this case, we want to schedule this and create a new article on our website every single day. So we are setting up the event to every day. And then in the trigger, I'm also specifying if I want to trigger it on weekends, as well as the exact time of the day. The first action after the trigger is going to be sending our prompt to chat GPT to craft our article. So in this case, you can see once again, we are choosing conversation. And so in the action, we are using a prompt that looks like this. We firstly set up the context once again, and then we have also used the web pilot plugin, which is super helpful. And I highly recommend you to use it for SEO. So in this case, what we did is that we use it to identify the keywords that are found on the first page on Google. So we got a very nice list over here that we are using in our prompt as well. I have a step by step tutorial on my channel so you can go and check it out after this one and then we are also setting up the details parameter where we are specifying how we would like the article to turn out we are then setting up the model as well as the memory key now remember memory key is very important especially in this case because in this case if we like the output we want to keep it very consistent so whenever it comes into our wordpress as a draft we will always know what we are expecting then username assistant name assistant instructions you can for example change assistant instructions to you are a helpful SEO writer and then max tokens, temperature and top P. I'm leaving it on default, but feel free to experiment with these. After that, we are not done because we have to create another action that is going to create a title for this article that ChatGPT is generating. So in this case, once again, we are sending the conversation to ChatGPT. Now, the great thing about the dynamic variables is that each time the new article is generated, the title is also going to change. So here we want to achieve exactly that. And that is why we are using the output from the previous tab that you can find in reply. So I'm writing down generate a title for this article. And I know that the whole article is stored under reply in the chat GPT conversation. I'm keeping everything the same. But once again, I would recommend you to set up the memory key. And then lastly, we are putting everything together and sending over to our WordPress. So in this case, we are choosing event create a post which creates a new post that is exactly what we want to do. And inside our action, we specify the post type. So we want to create a post, then we put the reply variables from the chat GPT outputs here. So in this case, we put the title under title as well as the whole article under content. You can set up a password that is going to protect access to the content. Then you can set up author. So in this case, I have just one author on my website. It's called pop ups land. And then under categories, it depends on how many you have created. In my case, you can see I have three different ones. I have article guides as well as uncategorized. So I want to choose the article and then in the status, you can choose whether it's going to be a draft or if you want to post it immediately. So in this case, you would choose published if you would want to publish it immediately. But let's say that you would want to double check each time and maybe add something, add headings or notes, and then you want to publish it on your own. So in this case, you would want to choose draft. And I'm going to right now show you how this works in practice. So I'm going to retest this step. And as you can see, we got a confirmation. A post was sent to WordPress about one second ago. And so if I go to my WordPress, you can see we don't have the article over here, but I'm going to refresh this page. And as you can see, it has worked. We got a new article over here that is a draft. So if I click on that one, we got the whole article over here with the title as well. And so right now you have a rough sketch, you can edit it, maybe add some call to actions at the bottom of the article, and then you can just publish it. All right, so the next AI automation is going to be once again connected to our CRM system.
system. In this case, we're going to be using HubSpot as our trigger and the event is going to be a new form submission. So you can create forms directly inside HubSpot and then embed them on your website. So they automatically come to your CRM system. And here in a similar way, how we did in the first example, we are collecting data about our prospects. And the idea is going to be that we want to automate the reply to this inquiry that the prospect is asking about. So the first action after the trigger is going to be once again to spark a conversation with ChatGPT. And then in the action, we are going to train ChatGPT on all the data that we need to answer any inquiries about our business. So this can include a description of your product, service, as well as pricing options. So you can set up a context where you tell ChatGPT about your business and then you instruct it to act as a customer service for your business. Then we are setting up more details about how the output should look like. And then we are specifying which inquiry it should answer. So in this case, it should answer the message that comes into our HubSpot. Once again, we're setting up the model as well as the memory key. Then we have username, assistant name and assistant instructions. In this case, for example, you can say you are a helpful customer support agent and then max tokens, temperature and top P we're leaving on default. Now, one thing I want to tell you is that maybe you are missing some information about your business inside your prompt and then maybe it's not going to be able to answer the question. Well, in that case, it's always going to generate very general answer to that question. And another thing is that you can also use something called AI by Zapier, which is a built in app inside Zapier that allows you to train ChatGPT on different questions. And you are also able to place URL links there. So whatever you have on certain pages, and then you can use it as an alternative to ChatGPT. All right, so we generated a very nice email that is going to be sent out to this prospect. And in this case, we also need one more thing, which is the title. So we want to spark another conversation with ChatGPT. And in the action, we want to say very simply create a short subject line for this email. And in this case, we want to refer back to our reply from ChatGPT that includes the whole email. Once again, don't forget about the memory key to keep the subject lines very consistent and the same format. Then you can also play with other settings if you want to. And lastly, we're putting everything together and sending this to our prospect. So in this case, I'm going to use Gmail, but you can use any provider that you are using for your business. So in this case, we want to send the email immediately to that prospect. So you can set this up to send an email or craft a draft. So then you can double check it, maybe change something and then send it over. But in this case, let's go with send email immediately. So we want to 100% automate this. And so in the action, you want to specify who you are sending the email to. So in this case, you got that email from the HubSpot form. So you are going to place it over here. You can set up your CC BCC from and then from name, you can set it up to your business name, for example. And then in the subject, which is required, you want to put the output from ChatGPT that generated your subject line. Body type, you can leave plain. And then in the body, you should put the output that you got from ChatGPT, which includes the whole email. Then you can set up your signature. But in this case, as you have seen, we set it up in our details parameter that it should always sign it with Thomas from Popups Land. You can also label this email inside your Gmail and you also can add attachments if you want to. Now I'm going to test this and show you how this looks in practice. So I'm going to test this action and immediately it was sent. We got the confirmation. So let's check that out. And yeah, it works. So we got a new email over here. It's from Popups Land. And if I click on that one, you can see we got the subject line generated with ChatGPT as well as it answers all the questions that the lead has. So that included more information about what Popups Land is and then also the pricing option. And lastly, we also got the signature, which was included in our prompt. All right, so right now we are going to look at how you can double your organic reach. So in this case, we are going to be using Instagram and the event is going to be a new media posted in my account. In the trigger, you want to specify the Instagram account to use. In this case, I have given Zapier permission to just one. So that is going to be AI rabbits every day. And remember, you want to make your Instagram a business account. The creator or personal account is not gonna work for Zapier. And you also want to connect your Instagram account with your Facebook page. All right, so the first action after the trigger is going to be a conversation with ChatGPT. In the action, we are using this prompt over here. We are firstly setting up a context. We are then going to try to generate a pin title for Pinterest. So basically, whenever we post something on Instagram, automatically is also going to be posted on our Pinterest. And so then essentially, we are going to double our organic reach. So then you want to include the caption of the photo. So remember, you type down something in your photo on Instagram, and you want to use that information to generate a pin title for your Pinterest. Then in the details, I'm setting up how the pin title should look like. And then lastly, I'm writing down based on the caption of the photo, write a short pin title that is a SEO optimized. I'm leaving all the necessary fields once again on default. I'm setting up a memory key. And then the second action 
is going to be generate the Pinterest description that we also need if we want to post on Pinterest. So in this case, we are sending a prompt to ChatGPT. So we want to use conversation in our prompt in the user message. We are specifying the context once again. Then we also add the caption of the photo. So ChatGPT knows a little bit more about the photo. So remember to include at least something in your caption to get better, more optimized SEO results. Then the details parameter. And then lastly, we are setting up the main prompt based on the caption of the photo, write a descriptive caption suitable for Pinterest that is SEO optimized. I'm leaving everything the same. And once again, setting up the memory key. And then lastly, we are putting everything together. So we are going to use Pinterest. In this case, we are using the event called create a pin, which creates a new pin on the board you specify. That is exactly what we want to do. And then in the action, you want to specify all the necessary information about your pin. So you can specify your board on your Pinterest where you want to place the pin. And then you want to obviously include the image. So you are going to include the same image that you posted on your Instagram that is going to be found inside your trigger, which includes the media URL. And that is where your image is stored. You should also include links. So you can either link it directly to your Instagram account. So whenever someone discovers you on Pinterest, they are going to be redirected to your Instagram profile. So this is good if you want to grow your Instagram business page or you want to specify any other landing page where you are, for example, selling something or collecting leads. And then in the title, you want to use the ChatGPT output that includes your title. And then don't forget about the description, which you generated with ChatGPT as well. Both of them, once again, can be found under reply in your ChatGPT outputs. All right, so right now I'm going to show you how this works in practice. So I'm going to test this action. All right, and we got a confirmation. A pin was sent to Pinterest about one second ago. So let's check that out. So I'm going to go to my Pinterest account and I'm going to refresh this page. And yeah, it works. So we got the pin over here. If I click on that one, you can see we got the image from our Instagram that we posted, as well as the title that ChatGPT generated, along with very nice and SEO optimized description that also includes hashtags. Now, remember, writing prompts is a little bit different. So you can go and grab my free P framework, which is a no junk, completely free resource that I put together. And you can find it in the first link in the description down below. If you are curious about four different AI automations that you can use for your social media, go and check out the part two of this video, where I show you four different social media AI automations. If you're interested in AI, then definitely subscribe down below because I post every single week. Thank you so much and have a great day.